Yeah, that's exactly. With warmer temperatures, Miss Tracy's been out looking for shed antlers, and Cable saw something very rare in Indiana. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Muddy Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solution, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Redneck Hunting Blind, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Master, Blood Sport Arrows, Prime Bows by G5, and Outdoor Edge Knives. AJ and I started out the week by traveling to the University of Georgia to attend the annual Southeast Deer Study Group. One of the more interesting papers this year was by some researchers from the University of Georgia where they fenced four 80-acre areas to keep coyotes out but low enough that deer could jump and noted that does were four times more likely to go in there and have their fawn to be on the outside. Think about the whole area of a doe's home range and they select the one area that's coyote proof. What does that tell you about how does react to coyotes? After visiting with fellow deer researchers and managers for a couple of days, AJ and I rode down to central Georgia and worked on a new property. This property is owned by Mr. Chick Gregg and they've had it for several years. One of the best features of this property is that it's part of a 3,000 plus acre co-op. Getting that many neighbors Using the same deer management goals and objectives is a huge advantage to any property. Mr. Gregg's property is typical of southern Georgia, primarily pines with some hardwood drains. I mean, it's all about soybeans. And the reason is soybeans and amino acids are little building blocks that build up. We spent a day touring the property and it was easy to see that a food covering water, food was the most limited resource. All the food plots on the property have been browsed down just about the ground level and they could easily be several weeks away from spring green up. Just going through the property on the tour here and we noticed that everywhere we've been, the smilax or cat briar, green briar, briars, been, the leaves been browsed up about as high as I can reach, six foot tall or so. That's pretty tall for deer. So we're obviously hungry, don't have enough food this winter. We're changing that. We've been talking about food plots. And right below that, we have a weed species, privet, and they've browsed even the wood on it, the leaves and the wood. So when I know deer are browsing privet that hard, they're hungry and they can't express their full either antler production or fawn production potential. Like a lot of landowners, they've tried a lot of different varieties of forage, but it usually boils down, if you have enough acres, that soybeans, especially forage soybeans, provide the most tonnage during the summer, literally more tons than most other varieties, and make enough pods to carry the deer herd through the winter. We noticed several old logging decks while touring the property. Logging decks are simply when they'd forested or thinned a part of the area, brought logs to one area, cleaned them up a little bit, and loaded them on trucks to take them to the mill. We're going to propose they clean off these logging decks and restore that soil there, fertilizer and lime, and plant clover in all the logging decks. Fertilize heavy. Again, it's easier to add more fertilizer and grow more per acre than it is to make more acres. And makes your hunting better because it concentrates the behavior a little bit more, the movement, the activity. So. I know y'all are serious hunters because anyone that would build a zip line across the deep creek strictly for the purpose of going hunting, not for recreation, is serious. Especially for a couple of old guys. For a couple of old guys, yeah. I love that level of intensity and I believe we've now got a great idea of the limiting factors and go home, develop plan maps that will put y'all on the road to better hunting and bigger antlers. Great. We rode home for one day, just enough to unpack our suitcases and headed out the next day to Kansas to work with Mr. Bill Bradley. Bill owns three different properties in Kansas, about 20, 30 miles apart. This happened to be a spot where they dumped a coal and washed the sulfur off. And it literally had driven the acidity down to two. That's almost enough to burn the human skin. There was a significant problem on this farm, and they all had four legs. Well, we're seeing some obvious hog damage. I think a lot of our viewers don't realize there's hogs in Kansas. They, yes, they've been uh, reported across the south line, but in this case, uh, someone in the vicinity has uh, brought them in illegally. Which is a problem, you know, let me say right now, don't want hogs in your neighborhood, definitely don't bring them in. Report people to do, because they end up doing a huge amount of damage and carry diseases that livestock and humans can get. 
It's important to note that hogs are not native to America. They're feral hogs, really, escaped, not wild hogs, and they're doing a lot of damage in this area. We strongly suggest that Mr. Bradley work with local government agencies to eliminate this population before they build so large that they can no longer be controlled. We really enjoyed visiting with Mr. Bradley and his friends. All three of his farms have great potential to provide awesome deer and turkey hunting for his family and friends. I, I wondered, have you checked the uh, Hidden Valley part? Have they you been? No, there wasn't much there ever. Really? Luckily. There's usually a lot of activity right here in this bedding area. Look at that rub right down there. See it just shining? Look, greenheads. Yeah. Did you get any of it? Yeah, I got them flying off. I'll do, I'm gonna call and cancel my hair appointment. Yeah, see, this is an addiction. Oh. Tracy loves shed hunting, and once the snow got off the ground, she's out every day she has a chance yeah. looking for animals. Yeah, that's heck of a shed. All right, he was right here. When Tracy brings a shed in, I'm gonna flip it over first and look at the base and make sure it's in normal shape like it just popped off the skull. By comparison, this is a normal shed, healthy. I imagine this deer will be here next year. When I look at this shed, I can see actually part of the skull is attached to the base of the antler. This probably was caused by brain abscess or bacteria inside the skull that actually is very acidic and erodes part of the skull bone. That deer may or may not live depending on how severe that erosion is. A little piece of white showing right there at the base. Yeah, I don't even see it. Come on up and look at it. So I looked and I saw the little white and I thought that's not normal in a bedding area. You see how clean that is? That means your deer are healthy. That's what you look for. We also track the location where Tracy finds all these sheds because they're obviously in late winter food sources or bedding areas. And given the tough conditions, those bucks could be in those same areas in December or January this coming hunting season. Adam came out and he shot us a photo of one he found and that was just like, that's it. And now the addiction set in. <laughs> and I've, I've got to get out and look for antlers every chance I can. I know you said the day we only had till 1 o'clock because you had a hair appointment and about 12 o'clock you said, hair appointment canceled, we're finding sheds. So. That's right. I'm sorry I had to cancel my appointment, but this was much more important than getting a haircut. <laughs> We realize there's snow throughout a lot of the northern part of the Whitetail's range still, and you just can't get out and look for sheds. And although it's been tough for Cable to get out and find sheds due to the snow, he did have a very rare and cool observation. Just pulled in the driveway and I just saw her run through the yard. So I just grabbed my camera and came out here and uh, started filming her real quick. She's staring at me right now at about 65 yards. Piebald, or mostly white, is a genetic trait that's very recessive or very rare in white-tailed deer. Piebald deer are protected in some states and legal to harvest in other states. As a biologist, I probably err on a should-be-harvested side because they carry some bad traits, Roman nose, scoliosis, bad back, and low reproductive rates. But as a hunter, they sure are beautiful to watch. And a couple of piebald deer I've seen while hunting I've elected to pass and hope I get to see him another day. Cable feels the same way. He thinks he's seen the same piebald deer since she was a fawn to now, and he's given her a pass every year. Whether the ground is still covered with snow or you're able to get out and look for some sheds this week, I hope you take time, slow down, and enjoy creation, and most importantly, listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. Dot TV. <laughs> <laughs>
really cool. But we finally got to find some shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs>